Let's open our Bible to the book of Exodus chapter 40, the last chapter. Exodus chapter 40. Glory on the tabernacle. Glory on the tabernacle. From verses 1 to 38, the whole chapter. This is the climax. The climax of the story of Exodus. The tabernacle is completed and the glory of Yahweh descends upon it. It is also an introduction to Leviticus. Yahweh commands the anointing of the priesthood who will dominate the next story in the history of the Israelites and receive Yahweh's instructions regarding the use of, of the carefully constructed tabernacle. Exodus 40 verses 1 to 15. The tabernacle is to be set up, Aaron and his sons to be sanctified. There is a distinct change in the personal pronoun employed in chapter 40 from uh, they in uh, uh, chapter 39 verse 43 to thou in chapter 40 uh, uh, verse 2 they and thou they plural and thou singular the shift the shift is from the construction of the tabernacle in which all people were involved to the setting up of the tabernacle and the anointing of it which was the responsibility of Moses one person there is a descending order of holiness in the items referred to in the chapter we begin in the most holy place known as the holy of holies in the tabernacle and in the courtyard down to the least holy place when a new year begins we should seek to serve Yahweh better than the year before a half a year the tabernacle was completed in half a year in half a half a year in six months the tabernacle was completed when the hearts of numbers are earnest in a good cause, much may be done in a short time. And when the commandments of God are continually attended to as the rule of waking, all will be done well. The high priesthood was in the family of Aaron uh, till Christ came and in him the substance of all these shadows it continues forever exodus 40 verses 16 to 33 moses performs all as directed there is a mood of excitement and anticipation among the israelites who have spent spent months carefully following Yahweh's specific instructions. Amazingly, the tabernacle is constructed on Israel's first anniversary as a free nation, as we see it in Exodus 12 verse 2. And just about nine months from the time of the people's arrival, uh, at Mount Sinai and uh, appears uh, that uh, 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 and, and just about nine, uh, nine months as I say it also appears it appears that the tent is created on this one day since the materials are all made and ready ready before this time as we see it in Exodus 39 verses 32 to 43. Yahweh, Yahweh's precise timing 
emphasizes how far the Israelites have, have come since, since they escaped from Egypt. Moses' rule finally seems to have evolved to have evolved evolving to something more uh, pro provisional almost priestly uh, which continued until Aaron and his sons are unwanted uh, and installed as the official priesthood of Israel. Moses offers incense and burnt and uh, meal uh, or green offerings and also washes himself like Aaron and his sons. When the tabernacle and the furniture of it were prepared, they did not put off rearing it till, till they came to Canaan. But in obedience to the will of God, they set it up in the midst of their camp. Those who are unsettled in the world must not think that this will excuse want of religion as if it were enough to begin to serve God when they begin to be settled in the world. No, a tabernacle for Yahshua is very needful, needful, even in the wilderness, especially as we may be in another world before we come to fix in this. And we may justly fear lest we should deceive ourselves with a form of godliness. The thought that so few entered Canaan should warn young people, young persons especially, not to put off the care of their souls. Exodus 40 verses 34 to 38 the glory of Yahweh fills the tabernacle. Since the cloud has been present with the Israelites from the time they left Egypt, since the cloud has been with them since they left Egypt and never departed from them, there is a sense in which nothing new occurs here. What was once distance either before or behind the nation or far away uh, atop uh, Mount Sinai is now in the very midst of the camp. The appearance of the glory of Yahweh in the tabernacle takes place after Israel's great sin, the golden calf, which is reported in chapter 32. Finally, the glory of God settled in the, settles in the tabernacle to abide there, not just as a momentary manifestation of Yahweh. The glory of God descending upon the tabernacle is the realization of Israel's highest hopes, of Moses', Moses noblest and most uh, impassionate petition. The glory of God in the tabernacle is so awesome that even Moses cannot enter it. Remember that Moses, Moses has seen more of Yahweh's glory than any other human being alive. In the burning bush in chapter 3, in the plagues and exodus of Israel, and from inside the cloud at Mount, and Mount, Mount Sinai in chapters 19 and 24. And at his request, he had seen even more of God's glory when he was privileged to view the back of God in Exodus 33 verses 17 to Exodus 34 verse 9. But the glory of God in the tabernacle is, is greater than what Moses or any other Israelite for that matter can behold. 
the cloud covered the tabernacle even in the clearest day it was not a cloud that uh, the sun scatters this cloud was a token of Yahweh's presence to be seen to be seen day and night by all Israel that they might never again question is the Lord among us or is he not it guided the camp of Israel through the wilderness while the cloud rested on the tabernacle they rested when it removed they followed him they followed it the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle in light and fire the Shashina as it is called made itself visible God is light our God is a consuming fire yet so dazzling was the light and so dreadful the fire that Moses was not able to enter into the tent of the congregation till the splendor was abated but what Moses could not do our Lord Yahshua has done whom Yahweh caused to draw near and who has invited us to come boldly even to the mercy seat being taught by the Holy Spirit to follow the example of Christ as well as to depend upon him to attend his ordinances and obey his principle we shall be kept from losing our way and be led in the midst of the path of judgment till we come to heaven the habitation of his holiness blessed God for Yahshua Christ know this and the Lord Yahweh will bless you amen hallelujah let us take these prayer points Lord Yahshua Lord Yahweh please show me your glory in the name of Yeshua thank you Lord all to your glory in the mighty name of Yeshua the Messiah we pray we may be very sleepy, but when we become fully awake, Lord Yahshua, show us your glory and those standing with you, as you did to Peter and his companions. Thank you, Lord. All to your glory. In the mighty name of Yeshua, the Messiah, we pray. Awake, awake, O Assembly of Christ followers, clothe yourself with strength. Thank you, Lord. All to your glory. In the mighty name of Yeshua the Messiah, we pray. Put on your garments of splendor, O Church of Christ, the Holy City. Thank you, Lord. All to your glory. In the mighty name of Yeshua the Messiah, we pray. The uncircumcised and defiled will not enter you again. Thank you, Lord. All to your glory. In the mighty name of Yeshua the Messiah, we pray. I love, O oh Lord Yahweh, the beauty of your house and the place where your glory dwells. Thank you, Lord. All to your glory. In the mighty name of Yeshua the Messiah, we pray. One thing I ask of Yahweh, this is what I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to gaze upon the beauty of Yahweh, and to seek him in the temple in his temple thank you lord all to your glory in the mighty name of yeshua the messiah we pray heavenly father give me the heart of moses who cared only to see your glory thank you lord all to your glory in the mighty name of yeshua the messiah we pray i pray for christ followers that they might so strongly desire to know you that they would be willing to sacrifice time and energy just to be assured that you are pleased with them. Thank you, Lord. All to your glory. In the mighty name of Yeshua the Messiah, we pray. 
above all, give them a holy desire to glorify you in their private lives, in their public lives, and in all their associations. Thank you, Lord. All to your glory. In the mighty name of Yeshua, Messiah, we pray. May you be their most prized treasure. Thank you, Lord. All to your glory. In the mighty name of Yeshua, Messiah, we pray. I pray that you will get glory from their lives. Thank you, Lord. All to your glory. In the mighty name of Yeshua, Messiah, we pray. Lord Yahweh, help us to get to know to know you as well as it is possible for us as sinners to know you in this life. Thank you, Lord. All to your glory. In the mighty name of Yeshua, the Messiah, we pray. Today, show us your glory through your word and help us to reflect this glory to others. Thank you, Lord. All to your glory. In the mighty name of Yeshua, the Messiah, we pray. Let us be like Moses, who did not know that his face shone. Let us live uh, in your presence, Father Yahweh. In your, uh, let us live in your presence and radiate, and radiate your presence to others. Thank you, Lord. All to your glory. In the mighty name of Yeshua, the Messiah, we pray. Thank you, Father Yahweh that you heard our prayers. Thank you, Lord, for your answers to our prayers. Thank you, Father Yahweh, for your word of wisdom, your word of direction, your word of guidance, your word of enlightening, your word of spiritual strengthening, your word of spiritual growth, your word of spiritual elevation. Thank you, Father Yahweh. We give you glory, we give you honor, we give you all the praise. In the mighty name of Yeshua, the Messiah, we pray.